Hi everyone and welcome back to my channel or welcome to my channel if you are new. For today's video I am going to be wrapping up all of the books that I read in May and June. I only read three books in May and one book in June so I'm doing another combined wrap up. I had also done a combined wrap up of March and April because I also didn't read very much in those months and I remember in that wrap up video I said that life had just been like crazy at the time and at the time I meant crazy in like a good way for the most part and then May happened and it kind of all started to unravel things in my personal life and then at the very beginning of June things seemed to just completely fall apart which is why I only read one book in June but I'm starting to feel a little bit better about things happening in my personal life so I'm much more hopeful for my reading and my wrap-ups in the future going forward but the reason I just wanted to mention that is because life has genuinely been super crazy the last few months so in this video if it seems like I'm struggling to come up with what these books are about or even my own thoughts on these books it's because especially the ones that I read in May I read them like almost two months ago and there was just so much happening in my life at the time that I wasn't really absorbing books the same way I usually would and I already struggled to do that so you can imagine how it's been for me lately. Also all of the books that I read in May I had gotten from the library and they have since had to be returned back to the library so I don't have them with me anymore but I'll just pop a picture up on the screen. But anyways yeah disclaimer if I'm really rusty on explaining what these books are about but like I said things have been crazy and I just don't remember a whole lot of the month of May. I kind of blocked it out of my memory. But without further ado, this is a very long-winded intro. Let's jump into the three books that I read in May and the one book I read in June. So the first book I finished in May was Stardust by Neil Gaiman. This is a young adult fantasy book in which we're following our main character who is a young man and he is very infatuated with this young lady who is a little less keen on him but he really wants to marry her and they watch this star fall from the sky and she says to him if you can bring back this fallen star to me then I will marry you. So he sets off on this adventure to find this fallen star and bring it back to his beloved but in order to do so he has to go past the walls of his village into this magical fantastical kind of realm to find this fallen star and that is essentially what this book is about. Now unpopular opinion sort of. I did not enjoy this book nearly as much as other people seem to. I gave it three stars so by no means did I dislike this book. I just didn't quite enjoy it as much as everybody else seems to. One of the things that I did love about this book was that everything about it kind of felt like I was reading a fantastical middle grade kind of book. There was a lot about this book that reminded me of the Chronicles of Narnia and the only thing that kind of sets it apart from being a middle grade, like this definitely could be a book that could be enjoyed by all ages, but there are a couple of romance scenes if you will. Nothing explicit by any means but definitely not something that you find in a middle grade book but everything else about it like the story, the way that it's written, it feels very much like reading a fairy tale and there was just a lot about it that reminded me of like the vibe of the Chronicles of Narnia or even like the Inkheart series that I used to read when I was a kid. Just a lot of it reminded me of these nostalgic kind of series and even though I'd never read this book before I felt like I was getting a lot of nostalgia by reading it. But at the same time what I liked about that also ended up being kind of what I didn't like about the book and that's that it reminded me a lot of things that I read when I was a kid but I don't read those books anymore and I don't really have an interest in reading them. In fact I have since tried to reread the Chronicles of Narnia as an adult and I couldn't get through it. Like I found it to be very boring and that's how I found some of this book to be is just kind of Boring. I'm also a very character driven reader and I feel like a lot of this book was written in a way where it kind of felt like reading a fairy tale where you don't ever really get to know the characters on a very deep level. It's kind of more focused on like the magical fantastical fairy tale elements of the story and not so much like getting to know the characters and that's just the kind of books that I prefer to read. So overall I gave this three stars. I did enjoy it. Again at the time that I read it in my life I feel like that also kind of hindered my enjoyment of the book but overall I would still recommend it. I still thought that it was a good book. It just wasn't necessarily my type of story that I usually pick up nowadays. The second book that I finished in May was a graphic novel and that is the Umbrella Academy Hotel Oblivion. This is the third volume of the Umbrella Academy and it is the final volume as of right now. Will they be writing more? I don't really know but if you watched some of my previous wrap-ups of when I read volume one and two then you know when I read volume one I was a little underwhelmed with 
the graphic novel. I am a big fan of the TV show and the graphic novel I just found it to be kind of confusing to follow and I wasn't overly keen on the art style of it but I ended up picking up volume two and I had so much more fun reading that book and everything that I didn't like about the first one was so much better in the second one. I really liked the story and the plot of the second one and I think it was a little bit more adapted to the art style so I could enjoy that a little bit better and I was far less confused with what was going on. So I went into this third one with a little bit more hope that I was going to enjoy it but unfortunately I think this was actually my least favorite of the three. I was so beyond confused reading this graphic novel. Like I had no idea what was happening. It was so confusing for me to follow and I feel like it's partially just because I'm still not super used to reading graphic novels and the way that they're formatted but also I feel like every other like page spread we would switch to following a different character and we were following so many different characters in different places doing different things and we were just constantly jumping around between all of these different characters and places and the different things that they were doing and it felt very like disjointed and kind of jarring for me when I was reading it so I was just very confused by this whole book um, so that was a little bit disappointing and I think from this point on I will probably stick to just watching the TV show like I said I don't know if they're gonna be writing more in this series because I think it ended with kind of like a cliffhanger sort of end ending or like an open ending it could definitely be expanded upon but if they do decide to expand upon this graphic novel series I don't know that I would pick up the fourth installment. And the final book that I read in May was actually my favorite book of the month and that is Follow Me to Ground. This is an adult horror fantasy book which because it's horror I don't want to tell you too much about it but essentially we're following our main character called Ada who is a young girl and she lives with her father and they are more or less human but not quite and they possess this ability to heal people and they live in this town where they heal the town's people whenever they have any kind of ailment but they do it in a way that is very strange and dark and kind of disturbing at times and I don't want to tell you too much about it but that is where more of the fantasy element of this horror story comes into play but we're also following Ada as she is very fascinated by the humans or in this book they call them cures and she ends up in a relationship with this young man in the town much to the displeasure of her father and she kind of ends up in a place where she has to choose if she wants to continue to be with this young man or if she wants to continue to live with her father and heal these people in the town. So I don't want to tell you too much about it but genuinely this is like a book that I have never read before. I think I ended up giving it like 4.5 out of 5 stars. The only reason I didn't give it a full 5 stars was because like I said again the time in my life that I was reading it I think it hindered my enjoyment of the book a little bit but also this book was written in a way where the dialogue was not in quotations like it usually would be and so sometimes I found myself being a little bit confused as to who was speaking just with the way that the dialogue was written. I again don't really know how to explain it to you but you just would have to look at the book to see it for yourself but that part of it confused me a little bit so for that reason I didn't end up giving it a full five stars but if I remember correctly this book is only around 200 pages and at no point does it ever feel like rushed or info dumpy or like it was too fast paced. It seemed perfectly paced and somehow the author was really able to pack a punch with this story in such a short amount of pages. I've heard this book described by multiple people as being very disturbing and it is definitely quite disturbing in some of the like medical body related descriptions because they are like healing people with illnesses and stuff like that and the way that they do it can be kind of like descriptive and gory so it is disturbing in that sense but it also is disturbing in other ways with other things that happen in this book that are just disturbing in nature not because they're necessarily like gory or gross or anything like that and if you are a more sensitive reader I would definitely recommend looking up trigger warnings for this book. The only reason I'm not mentioning any specifically here is because again I read it back in May I don't super remember all of the things that happen in this book but the main one that I remember is very much like a spoiler so I would just if you're a sensitive reader either don't pick this book up 
or look for trigger warnings before picking it up because it definitely gets very dark and disturbing in this but I really enjoyed it I found it super gripping and just like for the most part it was just like nothing I'd ever read before and it was incredibly interesting in a dark and disturbing way. So I would definitely recommend this book if you enjoy reading horror or you just want to read something kind of weird and disturbing and dark. I really enjoyed this. So now moving on to the one book that I read in June which is another horror book and that is Home Before Dark by Riley Sager. This is the second Riley Sager book that I have read and I thoroughly enjoyed it once again. This is not surprising at all because I read his book Lock Every Door a couple years ago and that is one of my favorite thrillers that I have ever read so I went into this book with pretty high expectations and I was not disappointed. In this book we're following our main character called Maggie Halt and when she was a very little girl her and her parents moved into Bainbury Hall which was this like creepy old estate with a very dark history and they were only in the house for a couple of weeks before something happened and they fled in the night leaving all of their belongings behind. In the following years Maggie's father wrote a book about what happened in the house and it became like a bestseller. Now we're following Maggie when she is all grown up and she has a business where she flips houses and she doesn't remember any of the things that happened when she was a child. So reading her father's book, she believes that a lot of it was made up. That is until her father passes away and she is actually left Bainbury Hall, which she didn't even know that her father still owned. So she ends up returning to this house from her childhood and she has the intention of flipping it and selling it, but she ends up learning some dark history about the house and that maybe not everything in her father's book was completely made up. And this book is actually told in alternating chapters between following Maggie when she is an adult and returns back to this house and then the other chapters are actually from her dad's book which I thought was a really interesting way to set up this story because it's kind of like you're reading two stories at once and then you seeing how they weave together is really intriguing. So I ended up giving this 4.5 out of 5 stars. Again the only reason I didn't give it a full 5 star rating was because I did find our main Main character to be a little bit annoying at times and for the first probably like hundred or so pages of this book I actually preferred the chapters where we were reading from her dad's book because at least in those chapters Maggie was just like a child and she wasn't a very big part of the story and we didn't have to hear her inner thoughts and stuff like that because she was a little bit annoying at times but that really wasn't a huge issue for me like I said because I still gave it 4.5 stars like I really enjoyed this book. This author has such a gripping way of writing these stories and it's the kind of thing where I remember this even happening in Lock Every Door the other book that I read of his where you think that like the twist happens and then he twists the twist and I absolutely love that so you always have to be on your toes when you're reading this book because you never know when another twist is going to hit you like even if you think there can't possibly be another one there is and I just absolutely enjoyed every moment of reading this book it was just so gripping and engaging and interesting and I loved how he weaved everything together at the end so I have officially made it a goal of mine to read through all of this author's work throughout this year so I already have one of his books on order his most recent one that he put out which I can't remember what it's called but it's something about like a house on the lake I've ordered it so I'm very excited to pick that one up when it arrives at my house but yeah, those are the four books that I read over the last two months. Leave me a comment down below. Let me know if you've read any of these books and what you thought of them. I'd love to discuss them with you in the comments. I hope you all enjoyed this video. If you did, please give it a thumbs up. Subscribe if you haven't already, and I will see you in my next one. Bye!